Aquarius, how are you? Welcome to your April 2016 Love and General Readings. Uh, no dryer this time, so <laughs> I'm so sorry about that from last month. I really felt so terrible, but thank you for watching anyway and coming back if this is your, if you're returning. Um, really quick, I wanted to do a quick shout out to a very, very dear friend of mine. Her, her, she just started her own tarot channel called Shooting Stars Tarot. I know her personally and she's truly one of the most amazing people. So um, be sure to check her out and support her as well. Um, I'm going to be using the Tarot of Delphi deck that I used back in February for the general readings just to sort of shake it up a little bit. So, okay, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started for your April love reading, Aquarius. Aquarius, here we go. Six of Pentacles, Chariot, Seven of Swords, Two of Pentacles, Six of Cups, Ace of Swords, Nine of Cups, Five of Wands, and the Lovers. Okay, wow. Well, um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm sensing like confusion um, on your part. Confusion about a, of course this is a love reading, so a relationship, confusing about someone. You know, if you are just starting to get to know someone, I think you're having a difficult time discerning whether or not this is something that you want. Um, And even so, I'm also even wondering if, no, I don't typically do, or I don't do reversals in my general readings. Um, but when I do my personal readings, I, I do um, reversals if I'm feeling that that's something that I want to do. Um, and I'm actually getting a sense, and this happened with one of the other signs as well, that I'm kind of feeling like this card should have come up reversed. It didn't, I'm not doing reversals, but I kind of am sensing this is like a more of an unbalanced, right? Because it's directly connected with both the Seven of Swords and the Five of Wands. And the Seven, and this is even directly connected with the Chariot, which they sort of reinforce one another and make those energies stronger, right? And for me, the Chariot is that head versus heart, that war that we have with ourselves at least once in our lives about someone, about ourselves, you know, the, the direction that we're going in our life. And it can be a very frustrating time, a very frustrating and confusing um, place to be. And if something is going well, but there are just reasons why perhaps, you know, things just, they're going well, but it's not the ideal. It's not everything you wanted it to be. And so you, Aquarius, I feel that you are questioning things. You are doubting your place. You're doubting their role in your life, your role in their life, doubting the future and, and feeling um, a little bit weighted and like you are maybe juggling two sides of yourself. Um, the one that really wants to be in a relationship, that really wants something to grow and, and, and to build something strong and significant, and the part of you that might be craving a little bit of freedom and a little bit of independence, um, a little bit of, you know, well, what do I get out of it? What do I want in my life? What, am, what are my goals and what are, what's my end game? And does this person fit into this idea of my life? So a little bit of this unbalanced 
this here maybe you giving more to them um, or oftentimes I feel like this you know it, it can be an expression of giving too many resources right too too much of your energy too much of your heart too much of your thoughts maybe this person you know I'm not seeing any really dark energies here by any stretch of the imagination but I think your thoughts are are unbalanced, okay, or the reciprocation isn't quite equal, right? For me, this card represents reciprocation and and feeling um, like there is balance in the relationship and there's an equal exchange of energy and what you give to them, they give back to you. But I feel that that's kind of a struggle for you right now. And don't get me wrong, there is definitely an element or an air of, of sweetness in this relationship. Perhaps this person could be someone that you know coming from the past. If not, if you're totally single and ready to mingle, um, this could be an indication that someone might be coming your way. If you are dating someone, it's possible there is a past connection. And it's also possible that your thoughts are sort of heading into that you know that past state if you're in an established relationship you've been together maybe many many years maybe you find yourself wandering to the past your mind wanders and reminisces about perhaps when that spark was was really really strong and 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 now in sort of comparing it right this can also be like a comparison between the past and the present which can be a very dangerous i mean that's like uh, playing with fire a little bit because you're sort of setting yourself up for disappointment almost because as relationships evolve as we grow as people and we change as people the more and more experiences we have we can't really make an apples to apples comparison to something from many many years ago but again that's pretty much only if you're in a long-term relationship um, but if you are just starting to date you are seeing someone new be mindful of how this person makes you feel be mindful of how much energy you truly are exerting into the relationship and make sure that you are feeling equal because this five of swords oh uh, sorry five of wands tells me that there might be a little bit of conflict there this can be conflict within yourself um it's usually like petty superficial type of arguments you know when your mind is playing games with you, when you know your mind is playing games with yourself and, and you are maybe having a good thing going, getting to know each other has been going well or someone new does come into your life and and when you doubt that, sometimes you you find reasons to fight. Sometimes they find reasons to fight because they can sort of sense this. Um, and there can be a little bit of resentment sometimes when, when your mind is, is behaving this way. So just something to be mindful of. The Ace of Swords was something that was really prominent in my March readings. And I think almost all my personal readings, this came up. Oh, I, every single time it was uncanny. But it's, it's here for you now. And I think you are going to have a little bit of an awakening, okay? A little bit of an aha moment where maybe this person points something out to you or maybe just this reading itself kind of helps enlighten some things, some reasons behind behavior, something like that. Um, but something is going to enter your life where you might really see things for what they are in a clear manner. This is not a romantic card here, but it is a romantic idea, right? It's, it's that parting of the storm, you know, the thunder clouds. It's the sun shining through. It's that light bulb over your head moment where things just click and things start to make sense. And whatever issues you're having, whatever questions and doubts or fears that you're playing with that might be causing some of this behavior, I think ultimately you find a way to look past that. If 
you are feeling like you're exerting a little bit more energy, you find a way to communicate that perhaps. You find a way to achieve that balance that you're seeking. And um, express to this person the way you need to be loved and truly listen to the way they need to be loved back. And, and I think this enlightenment, this moment, um, and I think it's going to be fairly obvious. Usually these swords are, or these um, aces are obvious energies that come into our life. They, they, they present themselves in a, in a very non-secretive manner, right? They're very conspicuous. Um, and I think when that happens, only when that happens, I think, will you be able to really truly explore uh, a really beautiful, deep-rooted connection. And if you are in a long-term relationship and you are doing maybe a little bit of comparison, past versus present, right? This is a, a card of those dualities, past versus present. And if you are doing that, I think you, you find a way to stop and find a way to see the beauty and the blessings in where you are now in your relationship and where you could potentially go in your relationship. You find a way to find that balance. These are here connected to one another. The, the sword is pointing directly up. You find a way to achieve that balance. You, you, um, you rectify you know, any of the imbalance that's caused here. And only through that will you be able to explore and appreciate the true chemical connection that you have with one another, physical, emotional, and intellectual. This is potentially you two getting on the same page, potentially you finding a, a deeper connection, potentially an expression of gratitude as well um, can help bring you to that moment of clarity. And this Nine of Cups, too, you know, it's, it's a little bit of, a, of an ego card. It's a little bit of um, also emotional fulfillment. It can go both ways. Don't let your ego, a bit of advice, affect the potential beauty that you have waiting in front of you. A new beginning, the threes, right? The Empress, the three, three of wands, new beginnings, new journeys, also a card of communication. I think there is an underlying theme of communication here for you. So pay attention to that. Pay attention to the way that you listen and the way you hear and the way you express. So it needs to go both ways. So just, just be wary of that. Um, and be sure that you not only hear it, but you apply what needs to, to be done, okay? Through that process, you have the option to embark upon something beautiful and something new, okay? I mean, truly, look at how beautiful all three of these cards are together. I mean, it doesn't get any more beautiful than this, right? The lovers, the pentacles, and the empress. True beauty, true... Um, attraction, right? A, a magnetism about you. Um, this process will make you feel more comfortable, more assertive, more um, confident in who you are and where you're going in this relationship. Ten of Pentacles, I think there's a lot of potential, like I say, potential, and, and be mindful of that word because just because it enters into your life doesn't mean it's going to happen. It's not a guarantee. It's just an opportunity to make something happen. Um, 
but an opportunity for something huge. Ten of Pentacles is building a legacy and a legacy in terms of you know generations and family and in you know I think when I whenever I see this card it's like the Kennedys or the Rockefellers like and obviously there's a wealth element to that because it's the Pentacles but that idea of building something substantial and being a partner that's willing and able to do that and and being you know emotionally mature enough in order to handle some things um, in, you know, in order to handle some issues and be able to really step back and look at a situation objectively and make changes accordingly, right? You need to listen, but also articulate what it is you need and, and expect the same from your partner. You know, this is, again, that card of reciprocation. It needs to go both ways. The exchange of energy is infinite and it ties us together. And um, I think that is something to... That can really take you into into a new realm of unexplored territory if you're just starting to get to know someone or if this is a long-standing committed relationship there's always new things around the corner um, and i think you are just about to to sort of make it around the bend so beautiful beautiful reading i love when i get the lovers and i love reading it doesn't get any more um this just doesn't get better than that, like I said. So, okay, let me go ahead. I kind of shuffled these cards already a lot because um, I'm a little bit clumsy with them and I don't want you to sit here through that. But this is your Aquarius general reading for the month of April this time, Ten of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, Hero of Swords, Three of Swords, Devotee of Cups, and the Enchantress of Wands. Wow, you actually have a lot of people in this reading. Um, Devotee of Cups, Enchantress of Wands, and the Hero of Swords, and the Artisan of Coins. So let me just think about this for just a moment. Um, I'm just struggling with with uh, the the number of people in in the reading, um, and I do feel like like it does have a little bit of a romantic air air to it, and there are some connections to the last reading. So I th I think your your love life, your love department is going to be fairly front of mind this month, and. I'm going to actually start with this Nine of Swords. I know it's kind of an unusual place to start, but I think that there is that Seven of Swords, that Chariot, I think it's deeper than I had originally suspected from the last reading. I think that there are things affecting you, things going through your mind, things that you're thinking about that maybe you aren't expressing, things that bother you, those doubts, those questions, those fears. They're bubbling up to the surface, and it's kind of like it's kind of keeping you up at night, right? It's causing fear in your life. And sometimes that fear can really suppress a lot of the positive things that are going for you. Um, and I think your remedy to that is like, put your head down and focus and go to work, right? Go get lost in a project, get lost in, and I think there might be a little bit of avoidance on your part that you're you are feeling things very deeply 
right now. You're feeling things deeply, but you are just going to work. Your mind is very active. You are doing a lot of things, but yet you're not necessarily addressing some of those things. Um, and, I, and I get the sense here, Eight of, of Coins and the Artisan of Coins. Um, these, these face cards don't exactly cross compare to the Rider weight deck. Um, so I kind of just read them differently. This is like a workhorse, okay? This person, this energy, this is you. Focused, dutiful, you know, service oriented, someone that just does things because it is their duty. But I, I don't feel that there is a significant amount of passion behind. It's like you're just going through the motions, but you're not like a, really harnessing the passion. And you, Aquarius, are a very passionate person. You know, we all are in in our own special ways. And um, and I think whatever it is that's affecting you, whatever doubts that are maybe holding you back a little bit, I think it might be time for you to maybe bring those to the surface. Three of Swords here, again, is, you know, a, a sign of sorrow and grief, and there's a little bit of sadness there. Are you getting over a breakup? Are you fearful of moving into a new relationship? Are you getting through some something heavy, you know, a health issue or a financial issue, you know, a large expense? Are you trying to pay off debt with your significant other? And is that preventing you from moving forward? Is it preventing you from taking a chance or taking a risk on something else? Um, and I think you're still recovering from something. You know, this is quite a process. The Three of Swords is quite a process. Nine of Swords, also a process. It takes time to acquire that many swords and it takes time to relieve yourself from them. It's not just like a quick in and out type of thing. It's, um, it's going to take time. Um, but again, I see your, sh I mean, well, not again, I didn't say it yet, but you know, I see your strength here, the first card in the square and you are taming the beasts, right? Now, and kind of the reason why I was struggling with like the people, the face cards in this reading was because I kind of was seeing the, the Hero of Swords and the Enchantress of Wands both as you. And I just wanted to sort of clarify that. And as I'm going through the reading, I am seeing that yes, they are both you, but they're sort of those dual sides to you, okay? There, there's two parts of you, that, that dutiful person that has things that are, that need to get done, right? Here you are, I don't know if you can see this card, but here you are, a warrior, you have places to go, you have things to do, okay? I mean, artisan of coins, eight of coins, um, you have a purpose in your life, you are charging forward, you are making things happen. Yet here you are to expressing love, to, you know, to someone that you love and, and taking the time to smell the roses, right? Taking time to, um, to feel appreciative of the things that you have. You know, this is a, a warrior and his wife and he's just given her a bouquet of roses. And, um, and I think that's a, a piece of advice for you when you're dealing with this many swords and when you are feeling like you have to persevere, when you have to tap into that willpower, that can be a very exhausting thing for, for everybody, you know? And when you have to like power through something and tame those beasts and, you know, tackle that debt or deal with the, the, the health issues or deal with, you know, well, even if it's more superficial, like, um, that final exam that's coming up or whatever it is, whenever you feel that you have to do that, it's, it's energy, it's resource intensive in, in terms of your energy. And, um, and I can see why you are just continuing on. You are just doing the, mo you're going through the motions, but this is a, 
an indication to you to take time to express gratitude for the things that you do have. It's okay for you to take your time going through this process of healing. It's okay. Um, but don't forget to express gratitude because Ten of Cups, you have blessings in your life. This signifies success of any circumstance, okay? Be it financial, health, career, relationships, family, any area, it signifies success and victory of those circumstances and, and overcoming those trials or at least making it through to the other side. And there are people around you. We all have people around us um, that do love us and support us. Um, and maybe your pride a little bit might be getting in the way of asking for help. That's six of pentacles in that last reading. I think, you know, that is an indication of asking for help, an indication of asking when you need something because you are giving a lot of yourself now. You are. There is a lot of energy exerted to other people, to other things, to responsibilities and obligations. You know, if you own your own business, it's to your employees and your clients. If you, you know, work for a church, it's for your, you know, your congregation. It's for so many different things, but not for you. Um, I mean, it is for you, but it's a reminder to express gratitude and give yourself some love, okay? But now, here you are, like I said, I do see it. They're, the energies are very, very different. But the Enchantress of Wands is someone that, and she goes perfectly with strength, right, to bookend the reading um, perfectly because she is unstoppable. She truly is an, is an unstoppable force and she powers through, she makes things happen. You know, she is the epitome of like a, a true business owner or a leader, someone who can take the reins and tame the beasts and not let it bring her down. She sees the victory in even the smallest victory and she celebrates that she appreciates that and as she goes along step by step again step by step going through the motions um, she will find herself at some point she will find herself looking back and thinking oh my god I have no idea how I accomplished so much there is a message for you in this process, in this mindset, in these lessons you're going through. And I hate to be so, you know, philosophical about it, but truly there is a reason for why you're going through what it is you're going through. There is a purpose in your circumstance right now. You might not be able to see it. She doesn't always see everything. She's not a, you know, a seer. She's not a prophetess. She, she's, she's intelligent, but she is not um, the high priestess, right? She is a human. She goes through human trials and tribulations. But um, this is a message that there is purpose. There is meaning. There is something else to it and the only way you will be able to see that is to make your way through it so let's pull out some more Ship, okay, I had a feeling that ship broke. Oh, and the star, I love the stars. She's so pretty. 
Um, I had a feeling the shipwreck, the shipwreck was going to come out because that goes perfectly with that Ace of Swords. Whenever I have the Ace of Swords or even an Ace of any suit and the shipwreck, it reinforces to me um, the intensity of that Ace, right? Now, we don't have an Ace, but you had an Ace in the last reading. Um, I, I feel with the Seven of Cups that right now, again, like I've, I've kind of been saying this already, but you really are feeling just quite lost, quite confused, okay? There is a message here to remain faithful, okay? The star, wish fulfillment, whatever it is you hope to get out of this, whatever it is you, you are wishing for ultimately, and not just like for tomorrow or for next week, but I mean really for your life in general, for your life as a whole. And I know it's so big and grandiose and all that, and I'm sorry about that, but um, really for your life as a whole, there is a purpose there. And this and the devotee of cups, I feel, are, are truly a, a beautiful um, companionship. And she is, you know, a guardian. She is an angel. She provides the stars for guidance. And while you may be feeling lost, while you may be feeling confused and feeling dark and fearful and, and anxious and, and feeling um, with so many doubts and questions and, and feeling like you might not ever get over what it is you're trying to get over, might feel like it's taking forever. Um, while you are lost in this haze, this fogginess, I think there's something that's going to happen. And this, again, that Ace of Swords, it's going to come in. It may bring a little bit more of a challenge, and I know you're kind of going through a challenge here, but I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything. Um, but I think you you might experience a little bit um, more, but whenever this card comes up, I always say it's like the universe's way of smacking you back on track, okay? Of getting you back to where you're supposed to be in order to attain whatever it is you're trying to achieve, in order to have that. This change, these challenges, these trials, these, these almost like seemingly barriers are meant to be embraced because here we have you know a terrible shipwreck three women tossed to the shore and yet here they are with an opportunity to settle uh, to settle down and build a brand new beautiful life for themselves and um, even with the tower you know this is the tower uh, the tower is an opportunity to rebuild and, and I think that is something to be celebrated. Okay, you have that lover's card in that first reading. That lover's card is not only your connection with another person, but your connection with yourself, with your personal beliefs, with your life, your ambitions, your goals, everything. And I think there's going to be an alignment for you things might the it's like the pieces of the puzzle okay the confusion the this you know things are going to feel cohesive for you on some level this month or within the next few months don't limit it to just april or right now to april but i mean give yourself some time again like these swords they take time to work through whatever is causing these whether it is a past relationship or you know like i've said before health or career or financial issues um, there is going to be an alignment there is going to be an opportunity for you to to feel complete okay very interesting, very, very strong energies for you this month, Aquarius. My goodness. Um, but blessings to you, best wishes, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you next month. Thanks.